So remember that we have tightness that we're going to place on the y-axis and then we have employment that we're going to place on the uh, x-axis and then the maximum size that we have for our for employment is given by the size of the labor force, right? So here we have our tightness, here we have employment, and here we have the size of the labor force, that's h, here we have our zero, okay? Um, so now let's plot our labor supply and our labor demand. So labor supply starts at zero, as we had said, and then it's increasing. I'm going to tend like this. Um, so this is the labor supply at, at theta. Okay, so then we have our labor demand. So the labor demand, what we have said, is that it's zero at some value of the tightness theta m. And then it's just um, a decreasing function of tightness. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, right? And then, um, so that's our setup here. And then what's the tightness that, that prevails in this market? Well, the tightness is given in equilibrium. At the intersection of supply and demand. So this is our equilibrium tightness. And then employment is also given here at the intersection of supply and demand. So now we have uh, our labor demand, which is here. Which says for each tightness how many workers firms want to hire, the supply. That says for each tightness how many workers end up finding a job through the matching process. And then, of course, in equilibrium, supply has to be equal to demand. And that, that um, describes what prevails on the labor market. All right. Um, so now the question is let's imagine that, in fact, um, business cycle fluctuations are driven by shocks um, to the labor supply. And here we're going to model them by assuming that the size of the labor force um, varies over time. Okay, so we'll assume that there are fluctuations in the size of the labor force, and that's going to shift our labor supply. And then we're trying to see what are the predictions of the model. Okay, so let's uh, use orange for that. So we're going to study shocks to H, um, the labor force. So these are labor supply shocks. Okay. And so let's try to see what happens. So imagine that uh, the labor force, the size of the labor force goes up suddenly. What are we going to have? And we can see it on the diagram. So if the size of the labor force goes up, we're going to have a new further out labor force, something like this. Okay. Uh, so the labor force is going to shift out and we'll have a new labor force that we can call H prime, which is bigger than H. Okay, so suddenly more people want to participate in the labor market. Now you remember that the labor supply is proportional to uh, the size of the labor force. So what we infer from that is that the labor supply curve is going to shift out. Maybe something like this. All right, so we'll have a new labor supply curve that's going to be further out. Okay, the labor demand on the other end doesn't involve uh, the labor force. So the labor demand stays the same. So what are we going to have here? Well, you can see that, um, let's see. At the old level of tightness, if we stay there, the labor demand and the labor supply, so at the old level of tightness here, um, at that level, the labor demand and the labor supply are not equal anymore, which means that um, what would happen is that 
it wouldn't be in an equilibrium. Like, you know, maybe firms and uh, workers would expect the same level of tightness, they would pose their vacancy, but then they would realize that actually the tightness that you realize on the market is not what they were expecting. Um, and so they are going to, they would adjust their behavior until we reach that equilibrium where supply is equal to demand. And the new equilibrium, we can find it here. So the new equilibrium, now that we have this higher labor supply, is here. So basically, the tightness is going to fall to this new level here. That we can call theta prime. So because of the increase in labor supply, the tightness is going to drop to a lower level uh, here. Okay, and what happens to employment? Well, employment is going to go up to a higher level here. So employment has increased here. We'll see in a second what this means for output in the economy. Um, what about the unemployment, um, the level of unemployment? Well, the, level of, the new level of unemployment is going to be here. Okay, and we'll call that U prime. So here it's actually tricky on the diagram to figure out what has happened to unemployment because there are two things that uh, two opposing things that uh, that have happened. So on the one hand, tightness has fallen, which we know tends to increase the uh, unemployment rate. But uh, excuse me, um, yeah. So the level of unemployment. So before it was uh, here. U. Now it's here. So actually, two things have happened. I was saying, but they both go uh, in the same direction. Sorry. Um, so one is that you have a higher uh, number of people in the labor force. So for a given unemployment rate, it means that you have more unemployed just because your labor market is larger. And two, the tightness has fallen. And when your tightness is lower, the unemployment rate tends to be higher. So here you have a larger number of people in the labor market and a bigger share of them were unemployed. So clearly the unemployment rate here, uh, the unemployment level is larger uh, and we'll see the unemployment rate also. Okay, um, so this is what happens if we have an increase in the size of the labor force. So what are the predictions of the model from what we've seen here on the graph? Okay, so let's summarize what, what we found. So here we've studied the impact of an increase in H, the size of the labor force. So what do we have? So first we've said that employment L is going to go up. Okay? Uh, so we have more employment. We've also said and we've seen that the tightness is going to fall. Okay. Uh, these are things that we haven't paid um, too much attention to uh, emphasize what happens to the unemployment rate, I like emphasize the beverage curve, um, but these results actually what happens to employment and tightness from that we'll be able to infer everything else. Um, okay. So tightness has fallen. So what happens to uh, the unemployment uh, rate for instance? So unemployment rate, which we've called small u, we know that it's s divided by s plus f of theta. So tightness has uh, fallen, which means that f of theta is going to fall, and because it's in the denominator, it means that u is going to increase. So the unemployment rate is higher. So here we're in a situation where we, we have uh, higher employment, lower tightness, we have a higher unemployment rate. What about the... Um, so I, I, I talked about the level of employment, like some things that usually we look add a lot when we talk about business cycle is output. And in fact, output is the main variable, which you know people also call GDP, that's the main variable that's used to determine whether we're in a recession or an expansion. Usually uh, good times or expansions or booms are periods when output is high, bad times or recessions or slums are periods when output is low. So let's try to see what happens to output. So output which we've called uh, Y, it's given by A, the productivity level, the technology level, times N alpha. Okay? So the question is what happens to N? N, we know it's a number of producers in the economy, it's L, the number of workers divided by 1 plus tau 
of theta, where tau of theta is a recruiter producer ratio. Uh, now we've said that theta has fallen, and we know that tau of theta as a recruiter producer ratio is an increasing function of theta. So that means that tau of theta has also fallen. So your market is less tight. Uh, it means that there are fewer vacancies compared to unemployed. It's easier for firms to fill their vacancies, so they are going to devote a smaller fraction of their workforce to employment. So tau of theta falls. Okay. Uh, we've also said that L has increased. So tau of theta has fallen, L has increased. So as a result, N, the number of producers, has clearly increased. And from this, we infer that output has increased. Okay. So here, when we increase the size of the labor force, when we have more people who enter the labor market, output is going to increase. Okay. So these are the key. Uh, these are the key results. So what have we found? Uh, so if business cycles were driven by fluctuations in uh, the size of the labor force, what would we have? So that is, you know, good times when output is large are periods in which H is large and bad times when output is low are periods when H is low. Then in that case, we would have that the unemployment rate U. So you can see here when Y is high, which is a good time, U would also be uh, U would also be high. So in that case, the unemployment rate U would be uh, pro-cyclical. So in good times, you'd have a lot of unemployment. In bad times, you'd have little unemployment. If uh, business cycle fluctuation were driven by the size of the labor force, okay. Um, the tightness on the other end that we've seen here has fallen when output is large. So your tightness would be counter-cyclical here. So of course this is if H, so the size of the labor force causes business cycle. Okay, so these are the key. Uh, these are the key results. But of course, what we said is that uh, in the real world, U the unemployment rate is counter cyclical, and the tightness theta is pro cyclical. So it means that these predictions that we have here they are uh, completely um, counterfactual. So what we infer from that is that what we see here, U that's pro cyclical, theta that's counter cyclical. These predictions. Or these properties of the models are counterfactual. They, they do not match what we see in the real world. So what we infer from that is that H or labor supply shocks in general, because the same argument would go through, these shocks they cannot cause business cycle at least in the matching model, if we you know, use a matching model to study the world. 